In today's video, we'll teach you how to play the classic tune, Scotland the Brave. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis Bagpiper, and on this channel I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also teach Skype and online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. There's a link below to the PDF download we'll be using today, so go ahead, print that out, put it on a tablet, have it in front of you so you can follow along. The day is here, everybody. We're finally learning the classic Scotland the Brave, the 10th tune in this basic series here. This is the final tune that I am asking you to learn before you make your transition to the Highland Pipes. I find having about 10, 12, or even more tunes memorized under your fingers at about 80% of full speed, if not full speed, is an important step in making the transition to the Highland Pipes so that you can spend your energy and effort playing the pipes, learning all of the blowing and squeezing technique rather than trying to think so much about your fingers. But we'll go more into that in the transitions video and when that is ready, it'll be linked up here. But for now, let's get into Scotland the Brave. Now, Scotland the Brave is a relatively straightforward tune when it comes to its phrasing. There is a phrase one question and there are two different phrase one answers with just the last few notes being different between the dad's answer, as I call it jokingly, and the final answer, or of course, mom's answer to the question. And then in the second part, there's a second question and a second answer. And then it goes back to phrase one question and the final answer. So structurally, it's relatively straightforward. That being said, it is technically dense. There is a lot going on in this tune. There are tar lewis, there are doublings, there are grips, there are D throws. There's a lot of E grace notes taking you down to other notes. And more specifically, there are 19 C doublings in this version of Scotland the Brave. I sometimes jokingly call it C doubling the Brave. This tune is often associated with the tar lua, which is at the beginning of the tune and a very important part of the tune. There's only three tar luas in the tune versus, again, the 19 C doublings. So this will be your chance to really make sure that your C doublings are good and under control. So let's start with phrase one. For our purposes in learning the phrases, we're going to omit the very first E that the tune has. When we put it all together, we'll stick that E in there. But for now, we're going to start just with that G grace note on A. So it comes in with a G grace note on A on a quarter note into a tar lua. And if you need help with your tar luas, there's a video right up there and in the description below with step-by-step -step exercises to build up a really good tar lua. But this is our third tune with Tar Lewis in it. We've already seen it in 42nd Highlanders and the Skyboat song, and those will be linked below. So if you need to review some of the tunes leading up to the Scotland the Brave, they're in the description below. But remember, with a Tar Lua, it takes its timing from the note before, not the note after. So what's that mean? That quarter note A is going to feel a little bit more like a dotted eighth A because we need to make time for the embellishment. These embellishments need to be quick and crisp, yes, but they still have to excavate their time from another note. You need to know where the timing of any embellishment's coming from. And in the case of the tar lua, it's coming from the note before. So G grace note to an A, and then before the beat, we're going to bring our pinky down, play a nice crisp D grace note to separate it into a second low G, and then an E grace note, taking us to the A, making sure that that E grace note is nice, clean, crisp, that it's not a big scooping motion trying to hide any extra noises. It should be very clear. Then the A you land on with that E grace note, it's going to be a dotted eighth note A. It's going to feel very similar in length to the A before the tar lua, because remember the tar lua itself takes a certain amount of time. So we're on a long A, tar lua to another long A, then a short B up to a C doubling. So that short B is just lifting the ring finger, then G grace note to C and a D grace note on C. This is the first of 19 C doublings. And not, you don't want the grace notes overlapping. You don't want the grace notes happening at the same time. And you don't want the second grace note being too big. You also don't want the first grace note being too big. You want to try to make both the G and the D grace notes equally crispy and just far enough apart that you can hear a clear C between them. It's called a C doubling because we want to hear two C's, not just one. Mm -hmm. 
So to put together what we have so far, Now, on this C, it's an eighth note. It's going to be an equal amount of time, 50% of the beat. And we're going to go to the other 50% of the beat with an E grace note down to an A. And again, we want a nice crispy E grace note, not a big scooping E grace note. E grace note, again, being that top ring finger. Again, as for where you keep your pinky, that's up to you. Wherever it allows you to have a crispy, clean E grace note is where I want your pinky to be. And then from that A, we'll head up to another C doubling, C doubling number two. So again, G grace note to the C, D grace note on the C, making sure again, we're not scooping that G grace note up into it. Nice, clear, small, crisp. Then after that second C doubling, you'll head up to an E. Now avoid the cross right here as you are going from C to E. We need to make sure that that ring finger gets up and out of the way before these come down or you'll hear. And we don't want to hear that low clumpy noise. We want to hear a nice, clean, then from there, we're going to go into the next bar with a high A doubling. And again, description to the high A doubling below for the exercise on that. But you'll head up to an A and you'll sweep your thumb across the hole pretty much as soon as you hit the note. You want to hear the A, sweep that thumb. And again, on this transition, as you go from E to high A, make sure that your thumb has left the chanter before the ring finger comes down or you'll bloop out a low A. We don't want to hear that. Then we'll hold that A for a full beat. On the beat, we'll sweep our thumb yet again. Uh, and again, I don't really care what direction, whatever works for you. We'll sweep our thumb again across that hole to separate into A number two. And then we have a grip to the third high A. And as with that Taralua, that grip takes its time from the note before. Now we don't want to give too much time to the grip, but we do want to make sure we hear two good, clean, low Gs. and. Right now, it's more important that everything be clear, crisp, and accurate than just fast. And then from here, to finish out the phrase one question, we're going to be on high A, down to an E, of, again, avoiding that crossing noise with that ring finger, to a C doubling, so C doubling number three already, and then an E grace note down to an A. And just like that, that's all the notes of phrase one. Now, let's stick it to a metronome at a nice, reasonable speed and see how that works. I have the metronome set right now at 45 beats per minute, but I'm actually going to go in and put some subdividing on. That means we're going to be hearing both the downbeat one and the upbeat and of each beat. And there is a link to my extended counting method video right up here that can really help you, well, break down how to think about the timing of each one of these notes and rhythms and all of that. So check that out if you need help with your timing. But what it's going to mean is we're going to hear a click each time for both the down and the upbeat during this. So instead of just four clicks per measure, there'll actually be eight. One, two, ready, go. And again, if that speed's too quick for you, no worries at all. Go ahead, slow it down some more. This is too important of a tune to play lazily, clumsily, with messy sounding embellishments. Get this good, clean, and accurate. Get a metronome speed that works for you. Here it is at 35 beats per minute. That same phrase, one question. And ready, go. This phrase is going to occur three times in the tune, the beginnings of lines one, two, and four. So get it good, clean, and accurate. But now let's move on to the phrase one, dad's answer. So this starts with a D throw, and for now we're going to be doing the light D throw. And if you need help with your light D throw, again, description below to exercises for your light D throw. If you have a heavy D throw ready, that is awesome. Go ahead and play it, but it's beyond the scope of where we're at. But we're going to be starting with a light D throw, which is going to be a low G, up to a D, down to a C, and up to a D. Oh, ba -do da Then from here, we have the nice, fun grace note change of D, G grace note to F. And this one happens seven times in Amazing Grace. So it was dealt with in that tune. And again, link to Amazing Grace in the description below. There's going to be a lot of links in this particular video below. But 
Again, briefly, this change is a little bit awkward and you have to keep your pinky down for just a second longer than you might think otherwise. So from D, G grace note to F, you're gonna wanna start on D, lift the top three fingers. So you're supporting the channel at this point with just your two thumbs and your pinky. Then you're gonna wanna lower your top pointer finger and the bottom three as you lift your pinky. In slow motion. Try that a few times. When you can do that and it feels clean and accurate, go ahead and try to speed up that grace note. Keep the D long. For now, keep the F long. Try to make that grace note transition quick and clean. And then to add the D throw. Then we're going to transition without a grace note back down to a D, which is relatively short because it's a 16th note. So just a quarter of the beat into yet another C doubling. And this one's from a D. So this one's pretty straightforward. You're going to, from D, one finger up, both pointer fingers down, bottom pointer finger to make the doubling. Then from the C up to an E, again, trying to avoid the cross. Don't bring these guys down too early. We don't want to hear a low G or a low A. Then from that E, another C doubling, and then another E grace note down to A. That was the same as the ending bit we did in the phrase one question. Let's put that much together so far. Now, in this version of Scotland the Brave we're learning today, we're going to go up from A to B with a grip. This can be rather tricky for some folks because you got to get from that low G up to the B and we don't want to hear a run between the low G and the B. We want them both coming up together. So A, again, down to low G, D grace notes separating that low G. But then on the way up, you're going to want to think about really exploding that ring finger up and off the channer. Let the pinky come with it, but moving both of them together up so that we have a nice clear transition. If you seem like you can't do that cleanly, do some exercises where you have your fingers down on low G, just explode that ring finger off a few times, leaving the pinky down, just isolating that motion. Nice, quick up, relax down. Do that a couple of times and I think you'll find your grip between A and B gets a lot cleaner. And again, because that grip is taking its time from the note before, that A you land on after the C doubling E grace note to A is gonna be quite a short A because you have to make the time for that grip. It's certainly not non-existent, but it's not a full half beat of a note as the eighth note would otherwise indicate because we gotta take the time from that grip from somewhere. Then from here, we'll go from B up to an E doubling. Finally, we get to play a doubling that is not a C doubling. So B to E doubling, we need to make sure again that we're not getting a cross down with the ring finger on bottom. We wanna initiate this with the G grace note and the lifting of the ring finger to get us to that E. So two fingers up on top, one finger down each front, top pointer, bottom ring, and then a nice clean, clear F grace note to make an E doubling. And if you need help on doublings, there's a link right up here to my exercises on doublings. Make sure they're good, clean, and under control. After you play that doubling, you'll hold that E out to the end of the beat, and then we'll separate that E into a second E with a tap of the top ring finger to take us down to a low A. If you're, you hear some sort of non-A noise, be it blurry or relatively high-pitched, check to make sure that you have these three fingers down covering properly on the bottom hand so you get a nice clear A. And then kind of a signature bit of this tune is this quick little walk down at the end, which for many people ends up being the hardest part of the tune for them. So from the E, you'll head up to a short F, G grace note to E, down to a D, G grace note to C, to a B, then a G grace note to the low A. If that doesn't come out clean and naturally the first time, no worries at all, here's a few exercises for it. So the first thing I want you to do if you're having problems with this is try from that E to just do all of the notes evenly and without gracing. And make sure that you can get all of those note changes in there cleanly without worrying about the rhythm or the gracing at first. When that's clear, now keep it even but add the grace notes in as in the music. Stop. 
step three to build this up. Now, try it again with the proper rhythm, but again, no grace notes. Or even more slowly. And when you can do all of that now, nice and slowly, add the grace notes back in, in the proper rhythm. You can get this, I know you can, but give it some time. This might take a few days, it might take a few weeks, but work on it. People know this bit of Scott and the Brave. If you had a non-piper try to sing you Scott and the Brave, they'd probably go something like, they know this walk down. It's just one of the parts of this tune that's so cool. So make sure you take your time to get it right. So now, phrase one, dad's answer. Let's try it back at 45, subdivided with the metronome. Ready? Go. Tempo by Frozen Ape is the metronome I'm using today, but there's a ton of great metronomes out there. There's the Piper's metronome. There is the Soundbrenner metronome. Just all of them work great. Just make sure you have a metronome and that you're playing along with it. Going into line two. The beginning of line two starts with the same phrase one question that we've already had, so we aren't going to cover that again. You'll see in the phrase one answer, dad's answer, that I have this phrase ending with an A quarter note. This is actually the same A quarter note that starts the very next question. So every once in a while, the ending note of one phrase is the beginning note of the next phrase. It doesn't really make sense to end this on the B. It makes more sense to end it on the A. So we're going to end it on the A. But be aware that A is the same A that is the first note of the next phrase. Now let's talk about the final answer. And in the final answer, we've already covered most of it. It's the same except for the last few notes. You'll do the D throw up to a G grace note F, D, C doubling up to an E, C doubling, E grace note to A, grip to B, that's all the same. To finish this one out, it's very straightforward. You'll do a G grace note down to A, up to a B, and then a low G to an A. I'll start from the A before that grip to B. And again. So in many ways, this final answer is easier than the dad's answer was. So let's try the final answer with the metronome here. Ready? Go. And this is also the same as line four of the whole tune. The end of the whole tune is going to, again, end with phrase one question and then the final answer, mom's answer, that we just learned right here. So in the phrase two question, very similar actually to the phrase one question. It takes the high A bit that was at the end of that phrase and makes it basically happen twice. So we're gonna come in on a C doubling to start, up to an E, making sure again to avoid the cross, a high A doubling, so up to the A on the beat, then sweeping our thumb, another sweep on the beat to a grip to another high A, and the same walk down as we did before, down to an E, C doubling, E grace note to low A, But from this low A, we're going to pop right up to high A again, sweep the thumb in that high A doubling, wait for the beat, sweep it again, another grip to high A, down to an E, C doubling, but rather now than going with an E grace note down to A, we're going to go just straight to an E without another grace note. And that's the phrase two question. Let's go ahead and play with the metronome. Now this has a pickup note, so we're going to be starting on beat four of the metronome, not beat one. So if you're using a metronome with an emphasized downbeat on beat one, make sure you start this phrase on beat four. So one, two, three.
Now with the Toon Scout and the Brave, interestingly enough, there's kind of two versions of it. There's the high hand version, which we're going to be learning in just a second, but there's also a low hand version. If you want to learn the low hand version, which basically means that the second phrase of line three goes down, it actually goes back to the dad's answer, that phrase one dad's answer again. So if you're learning the bottom hand version, you've actually already learned all the phrases of the tune. The high hand version, however, goes to a unique set of notes that only occur in this phrase. So for many people, this tends to be a rather difficult phrase for them, but no worries, we're going to work it out right now. So we're ending the last phrase on an E. So the first downbeat of the phrase to answer is going to be a high A doubling, so A sweep to the thumb, and another sweep on the B. Then from here, we're going to go down to a high G. We haven't played a ton of melody high Gs. Make sure the ring finger doesn't stay on the channel as you make that transition. You want to feel the hand move from high A to G, getting that ring finger off. And then from here, we have a high A grace note. We can't emphasize the next note with a G grace note because the G grace note finger is in the air. So instead, we're going to briefly have our thumb come off and then both fingers down to that F. So to hear all that put together, once you get to that F, we're going to do basically the same thing again, though we're not going to spend quite so much time on A. So from F, we'll go back up to an A with a sweep of the thumb for that doubling, then straight down to the G on the next beat, A grace note to F. So to put all of that together, then from that F, back up to a high A, then we have an F grace note, or as I like to call it, an F catch from high A to G. We want to emphasize the G, but this time we're coming from a high A, so there's not a higher lifting grace note that we can give any emphasis to that note with. So instead, kind of like we did with that low G, which I also like to call a low G catch, um, when we're on B or C to low A, we can do something similar with the catch here from high A, F to G. It just helps make that G pop out a little bit more. And then here we're going to walk down to an F. From the F, we're going to go into an E doubling. So one finger up, both down quickly for a nice chirpy G grace note. And then the F grace note, the middle finger. Switch to a D. This is the one. Lots of crossing noise potential here. So make sure that these come up before that comes down. But they got to be kind of right on the money. Then a C doubling from D then a B, and a G grace note to A, which is actually the first note of the next phrase. So there's a lot going on in this phrase that's different. Let's go ahead and bring this down to 40. We'll average the distance between that 35 and the 45 and give this phrase two answer a go. So ready, go. And similarly to the phrase one answer, dad's answer, this A that we're landing on again is the same first note of the phrase one question. Again, they kind of overlap in this regard. It just doesn't make much sense to end the phrase on a B. Now, at 40, let's try all of line three, the phrase two question and the phrase two answer. One, two, three. And that's Scotland the Brave. That A we just landed on again is the first note of the phrase one question, which starts us up on line four and then ends with the final answer that we've already gone over. So now let's put this all together on a set of practice pipes and um, yeah, give it a listen.
So once you have this tune down, going well, memorized, good, clean, and accurate, and you've built up your repertoire if you're following this basic series. So that means The High Road to Garlock, Amazing Grace, Coral Holy's Welcome, The Brown Haired Maiden, Cork Hill, The Rowan Tree, 40 Second Highlanders, Skyboat Song, Athel Highlanders, and Scotland the Brave. When you can play all 10 of those tunes well, memorized accurately, cleanly on your practice pipes or your practice channel if you don't have a set, but I really do implore you to think about getting a set of practice pipes because, well, they can really help make that transition of the Highland pipes better. But in any case, when you can play all 10 of those tunes from memory well and cleanly, you're ready to make the transition to the Highland pipes. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. I also have a Patreon where as little as a dollar a month goes a really long way to helping support the channel. And you'll see names now of folks scrolling up, including Miss Carrie Tresek, my number one supporter. But these are folks that contribute to the channel monthly. They often get early access to other videos and things like that. So check out my Patreon and help support the channel. I also give Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see here and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this fine shirt I'm wearing right here. But there's also hats and hoodies and mugs and other things. So go get yourself some bagpipe merchandise and let the world know that you command your bagpipe. Thank you again so much for watching. I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.